Come up with the idea. And, and all the neighbors would come. I need someone to walk through this. I have an idea. No guitar. Did he ever play? He would laugh when I would do Shakespeare or something. I kind of got to that place. We finished the scene. Well, I was born in, uh, in Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, a lot of years ago. <laughs> um, I, I've always been uh, I, I've always been around creative people. So uh, at an early age, um, you know, I, I pretty much knew that I wanted to be a creative person. I pretty much knew I wanted to be famous. Uh, I guess every kid <laughs> wants to be famous. Before I even start, I started acting when I was nine. Um, when I was about seven years old, I uh, proclaimed to my mother that I was going to either be a famous actor, a famous poet, or a famous basketball player. I was serious, yeah. yeah even back then, I was writing poetry. Um, I think it's, well, one, you know, my, uh, my mother was involved in an acting, uh, you know, a theater for a very brief moment. Like, I remember seeing her on stage one time. Um, my dad uh, ran a community center, and they had a theater group. So I think as a, as a, a really young child, four or five years old, I'd kind of been around this theater uh, vibe. Um, my dad, uh, you know, has always been heavy off into jazz. Um, he went to, uh, my dad went to school with Gil Scott Heron. So, again, as a kid, I'm listening to, you know, I'm listening to jazz, I'm listening to Gil Scott Heron, I'm listening to Last Poets, I'm listening to this poetry. So those were, you know, influences, big influences on me as a young child without my really being aware of it. Well, it was actually, my mother was always looking for things for me to do outside of school. Um, so I wasn't just coming home from school and hanging out with, you know, my friends on the corner. So, um, you know, before acting class, it was basketball. I was in the basketball league. Uh, and then, you know, this one season, uh, basketball season was over. My mother's friend suggested uh, an acting workshop. So I went, I was like, sure, fine. You know, I, I went in, um, auditioned to get into the workshop. It was, you know, children's theater, community theater. But it was something that I took to pretty immediately. I loved it. Um, my mother saw that I loved it, so she would always kind of use, you know, my wanting to go to the, to the acting workshop, you know, kind of as the carrot to keep me on the straight and narrow. My grades had to be good. Um, if not, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go to the acting workshop. Um, I had to have my chores done in the house. If not, I couldn't go to the acting workshop. So, again, she was just always, you know, finding things for me to do just to keep, you know, to keep me busy and to have things for me to channel my energy. In the in the workshop, you know, we were doing uh, we were doing plays. So the very first play I did uh, was called Alice Is That You, and it was based on The Wiz. Uh, Dorothy gets the eyes. Everybody thinks she's Alice from Alice in Wonderland. I got to play the Tin Man, and um, it was great. But I think the the thing that really hooked me was opening night. Um, after the show, we all come off for curtain call. And a nine-year-old nine Leo <laughs> comes out, and all these people are clapping and screaming for me, and I get to take my bow. That's what got. That's what did it for me. Well, the acting um, still at, at that point had, you know, been um, it had been a hobby. Um, so I've been doing theater for a couple of years. I've been doing some television stuff, some episodic stuff. Um, and then when the Co when the audition for Cosby came about, initially, you know, my agent submitted me, um, but they were looking for a six two, fifteen year old, and I was five five and thirteen. So uh, when I was initially submitted, they didn't want to see me at all. Uh, and then they got down to the to the to the very end, got down to the wire, and they still hadn't cast that role yet. All we knew was, you know, six weeks. But she felt like one, she could always get a job, and she felt that it would be important. Uh, it, was, it was an important enough gig to at least be able to have on my resume that I worked with Bill Cosby for six episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think by the time the show aired, um, I think by the time we got to our third or fourth episode, they picked us up for, for, for nine episodes, then 13, and finally a full season. But it was really, um, you know, I think it was really a case of, you know, taking it day by day. No one had any idea that the show would become the, the phenomenon that it did. I was about nine I, I was doing uh, community theater and I think I was really fortunate because uh, my mother was very encouraging of um, you know my love for acting um, and she also you know always put kind of responsibilities uh, that I had to finish to make sure I could actually go to my acting class and I think uh, that it's really important uh, that young people have uh, have support and have encouragement uh, for the things that they like to do uh, and for the things that you know they're good at because even at this day um, you know I can you know, I, I can definitely point to my mother and definitely thank my mother for her uh, encouragement and support for, uh, you know, for this thing called acting that I dug as a kid. So uh, when I was initially submitted, they didn't want to see me at all. Uh, and then they got down to the, to, the, to the very end, got down to the wire, and they still hadn't cast that role yet. My agent resubmitted me, um, and I basically went in on uh, I went in on on the regular audition. I'll never forget it was a Good Friday, 1984. I went in. I auditioned like 6:30 on on a Friday, so I was literally the last person they saw. Um, and I came back on that Monday for the you know the final callback, and you're you know you see the other other people who are auditioning for the roles, uh, and there was literally uh, there were three guys. It was down to three guys. It was a guy from New York, a guy from Chicago, and me from L.A. So I was literally the last person they saw, and. Um, you know, I went into the to the audition, and there's you know people from the network, the producers, the director, Mr. Cosby is there, and uh, in that audition, you know, we did uh, it was you know Cliff and Theo scene with the monopoly. Theo wanted to be regular people, and we're auditioning that scene, and I do the whole scene. I'm meeting with the casting person, and it's really funny. People in the room are laughing, so you know, obviously, I'm doing a good job. We finish the scene, um, and Mr. Cosby just looks at me, and he said, "And I was reading the scene like you see kids on television. They're kind of smart alecky. They're, you know, the father's talking. They're rolling their eyes, and, <sighs> and so and the uh, the room is loving it. So I finish the audition. I look up. And Mr. Cosby looks at me, and he says, "Would you really talk to your father like that?" And I said, "No." He said, "Well, I don't want to see that on the show." He said, "I tell you what. You go back out there and you work on it. You come back later." <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, I just, I, wow, I just jacked this whole audition. Everybody else loved it. What happened? And I felt like I jacked the audition up. But I was able to, uh, you know, to go back out. Uh, my acting, my acting coach was with me. So we, you know, we went, we went back, we kind of re we reworked it. And I came back in um, and, you know, gave them a total 180 degree turn on the character. Um, and to this day, Jay Sanders, the director, always says that what got me that role was the fact that I knew how to take direction. And, and, and I think, and even then, I think even then, no one really knew, um, you know, how well the show was going to do. I mean, obviously, NBC believed in the show, but there was only a, a, an initial order for six episodes. So when um, I actually booked the role, you know, living in Los Angeles, they started talking about uh, relocation money. And we were like, relocation to where? Yeah. And I said, you know, we're shooting a show in New York. So uh, my mother quit her job uh, to come with me to New York. And again, all we knew was, you know, six weeks. But she felt like, one, she could always get a job. And she felt that it would be important 
uh, it, was, it was an important enough gig to at least be able to have on my resume that I worked with Bill Cosby for six episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think by the time the show aired, um, I think by the time we got to our third or fourth episode, they picked us up for, for, for nine episodes, then 13, and finally a full season. But it was really, um, you know, I think it was really a case of, you know, taking it day by day. No one had any idea that the show would become the, the phenomenon that it did. When we finished, I was uh, 22. Yeah, yeah, I, I literally grew up on that show. <laughs> well, I'd always, I'd always been preparing for it. I mean, for the, um, you know, when the show first hit and it was this huge success, you know, I'm 14 years old, and my mother sits me down and says, listen, baby, it's great that this show is doing so well, but you know how this business is. This show is number one now, but this show could be over next year. What are you going to do when this show is over? You know, at the height of this history-making television show, um, instead of, you know, sitting down and, you know, resting on my laurels that, hey, I'm a TV star, um, my mother, um, you know, embedded in me the concept of, you know, life after Cosby. I think it's always a challenge, um, you know, when you're part of, uh, you know, such a uh, such a famous show, um, and you know, you're you're used to being in the public eye and working all the time. Um, I think it, it, it is definitely a, a transition that you have. Um, that you have to make from being in the public eye all the time and adjusting to, uh, you know, no longer being, uh, <laughs> being the flavor of the month, if you will. And I always, you know, try to get people to understand uh, the big picture. And, you know, just because you have, uh, you know, a hot show or a hot song out right now, that does not guarantee a long career. Uh, and, you know, I being one uh, who's in this for the long haul, um, really focus on, you know, not just what's happening now, uh, not just what I've done in the past, but the big picture and, and the overall journey, because longevity is what it's all about. So we literally lived all eight years, each eight year of the, each year of those eight years, as if it were the last year. So I was always, you know, so my money was always right, <laughs> um, and I had always been thinking about, you know, life after Cosby. So I started directing early on. Um, I was doing a lot of my own individual, you know, projects. Um, I started directing music videos. By the time I left. Cosby I had about a half a dozen episodes under my belt. I'd been directing Fresh Prince of Air, doing a lot of work for Nickelodeon. So I had really been preparing for life after Cosby because I also knew that uh, you know it's not necessarily a, a smooth transition from being uh, you know child actor to being taken seriously as an adult actor. So I really spent uh, you know all of my time on the show focused on life after the show. Almost maniacally obsessed with, because I didn't, I never wanted to be one of those, well, where are they now, guys? And I remember seeing a show, and you know, the show was about where are they now, with all these child you know, stars that you don't know where they are now. That horrified me. And I knew that, you know, that's not the list I wanted to be on. Well, I mean, really, the whole journey. I mean, I've had, um, I've had six television series since Cosby. <laughs> um, you know, so I've always worked. I've always been working. Um, you know, I think the, you know, I think, you know, the 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 dark moments, which I really can't really even consider dark moments, mm. but you know, there, you know, there'll be a there could be a couple of years in between a TV series. I mean, you, you come out the box with a number one TV show for eight years. I mean, where do you go from there? 
you know. Um, and then I had a show, Malcolm and Eddie, that lasted for four years. Um, another show, Jeremiah, lasted for two years. So, you know, there's always a couple of years in between shows. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of those, um, those timeless um, uh, projects that I've been a part of. Um, Magic School Bus is definitely another um, a, another show I'm proud of because it's like there's just a whole other generation of kids, um, you know, who are you know whose lives I am a part of, separate from from Cosby. So I'm I'm proud of that. You know, I remember when we were doing Cosby, there were times where you know there was like some slang I wanted you know to add into the, into the dialogue, and Mr. Cosby would say, "No, that's gonna date the show, because people use that slang now. Let's make up slang." So in 20 years, when people are watching this show, the show is still relevant. And I look at the genius of that because here we are 25 years later and it's one of the most relevant shows on television still. Um, so there's always been a, a concept of timelessness for me. I think for me right now, the most interesting time of my life because at 38, I'm in, the, in a process of and I guess I've reinvented myself, so to speak, a couple of times because of the music, you know, from the directing to the poetry to the music and the music and poetry now, to um, now just as, you know, as I'm looking at 40, you know, I'm in the process of, um, you know, just, just really finding, you know, finding my place as, I guess, a full adult. My mom and dad, discipline for them. Going up. You know, the, the cool thing about about life and being, uh, you know, being a creative person is that you're you're constantly evolving. You're constantly growing. You're, you're constantly trying to find uh, ways to, uh, you know, to to be better as a person uh, and as an artist. And I'm in a really exciting place now because. Uh, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the next chapter, and I'm looking at uh, a really wonderful career that I have had thus far, uh, and I'm in uh, a conscious place of literally writing the next chapter for myself, and that's very exciting. You know, of course, the Cosby Show will, you know, will go on forever and will continue to affect people's lives. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm really proud of, uh, of my music because with my music, my goal is to create that same uh, kind of timelessness. Uh, so I think it's one of the reasons why it kind of takes me some time in between CDs because I'm, I'm not chasing the sound of today. I'm chasing, uh, you know, I, I'm creating the kind of music that when you go back and listen to it five years from now or ten years from now, it's still relevant. Mm. So I kind of, you know, kind of base, you know, I think everything I do with trying to, uh, to maintain that type of, of, of timelessness. Yeah, well, I think I think part of it is, um, you know, oftentimes as creative people, we, you know, we tap into this creative well, and we're, you know, we're extracting, you know, creativity from it, but we forget to replenish it. So I think, um, not I think, I know that this time that I've been in, in, in what I, I keep calling a writing slump is just really, uh, you know, the process of replenishing that creative well. Uh, so I'm in a really interesting place of, um, you know, just finding out, finding out who this guy is, um, finding myself closer, uh, you know, on the journey of being the man that I want to be. You know, you spend your life saying, well, this is the, this is the type of man I want to be. 
and then you look up one day and you say, okay, well, you know, all of those years I wanted to be this type of man, I'm at that age where <laughs> if I'm not that cat, I need to figure out how to be that cat. So it's just kind of nice, you know, uh, being comfortable in my skin, um, realizing that I am pretty close to the cat I've been trying to be. Um, and uh, and finding a comfort in that and seeing how that influences uh, the work all over again. Uh, not just the poetry, not just the music, not just the writing, but even, you know, me as an actor and my choices mm -hmm. as an actor and, and, and my instrument as an actor. I'm in the process of, I'm, I'm seeing how that's uh, uh, developing yet again. Yeah, I'm I'm on my uh working on the third C D. And um, you know, the like the first the first C D was an E P, so it was about seven songs. The second C D was that's the, the one full I have here. That's the second one. That's yeah. the full blown other Love and issues. Love and Other Social Issues. Yeah. So I, and, and that it took I spent so much of my life mm -hmm. writing this, um, writing the second C D and it's it's a piece I'm still proud of. But going on to the third CD has been interesting because I feel like I've given so much to the second CD and, uh, you know, just the process in creating, um, you know, where I am now as an artist versus, you know, years back when I was this guy. So it's been a really interesting, uh, it's been an interesting time in terms of uh, the writing process and just trying to, um, you know, keep the channel open and be in tune to, uh, you know, to where I am and what wants to come out. Man, I wish I was doing a show so you could come and shoot the show. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I say that because, um, you know, there's always been a certain level of integrity um, that I've been, been able to maintain. So when people come to see my show who really may not know about the music, um, you know, most people come, they're figuring, okay, it's gonna be, you know, at the very least it's gonna be okay. And when they come to see the show, the biggest uh, joy I get is the shock factor. Well, and people say to me all the time, you know what, this show was, you know, no offense, but this show was much better than what I thought. And I'm like, that's, that's great because it, it goes, um, you know, what I do with the music and poetry just goes so far beyond what people are used to seeing me do.